Well, hi, everyone. I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor at uh, Bloomer Boomer. Now, a lot of us uh, baby boomers are retiring from the job market. Many of us have had all our lives, but that's only half the story because uh, many baby boomers are also planning a second career, sometimes called an encore career, for different reasons. Some leaving behind the, the daily uh, commute <laughs> and many of us are looking for a new job opportunity or an adventure that's why we're talking to the author of a new book Gary Bernison a CEO of Corn Ferry a global organizational consulting firm and he is a a New York Times best-selling author now he just released his newest book lose the resume land the job and I think he'll have some really helpful hints to uh, find that encore career many of us want and need. Now, after all, odds are um, more of us than ever before will be living longer and more active lives than ever and want to do something with all that extra time and, and good health. We'll talk to Gary Bernison in just a moment. Now, just want to let you know this is part of the uh, Plus 50 Good Life Movement, a project of uh, the bloomerboomer.com publication. We'll be back with uh, Gary Bernison, CEO and author of the new book, uh, Lose the Resume and Land the Job, right after. So, Gary, it is so great having you here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's great to be here. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's get that nagging question out of the way first. Uh, I mean, how many of us uh, 60 and 70-year-olds uh, will face the age bias in, in finding that encore career? Uh, less today, um, you know, for sure, because the reality is just in the numbers. There are uh, 50 million uh, millennials uh, but there's 75 million uh, baby boomers. So people are living longer, working longer. And whereas that used to be an issue, um, I, I don't really see it as a, as a you know issue today. So it's uh, the hiring folks are accustomed to that. Uh, there's not a reluctance because of that age barrier. Oh, I could care less. I'm a CEO of a company. We've got a couple billion dollars in revenue, 8,000 employees. I had dinner uh, two weeks ago with an employee who's 85 years old. So uh, we don't have a formal retirement policy. And, and I think just, you know, the, the numbers are going to bear it out that people are going to have multiple careers in their life. Yeah. Well, listen. Let's get uh, let's get a little bit a bit of uh, a backstory to you. You you're you, who do you work for? A little bit about uh, your experience uh, in the hiring world, and um, and that'll be really great to know. Yeah, I'm a CEO of a public company. It's Corn Ferry. We're an organizational consulting firm. Uh, we operate in 70 countries around the world, and I've really. You know, as a baby boomer myself, I will have worked for five different employers um, during the course of, of my career. And you look at a millennials today, they'll, they'll work for 30 different employers over the course of their career. Yeah, that uh, is a definite difference. And uh, then your uh, expertise is, um, is in what, uh, well, it's more than human resources if you're a CEO of a company, but, but to write this book, you must have had some focus on that whole world of hiring and firing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it, you know, at Corn Ferry, our business is to help companies design their organizational strategy, um, how they, you know, the roles and responsibilities, uh, how they compensate people, how they motivate people, how they develop people, as well as helping them um, hire and select the kind of talent they need to succeed. So, yes, we put an executive in a new job every three minutes. Uh, so we, we know something uh, about uh, careers and development and finding people jobs. Now, an executive uh, who's uh, 35 versus an executive who's 65, I, I, there's a big age barrier there. You know, what generally speaking would be the difference between the two and, and how one might be better than another or they'll be on an equal footing? Uh, judgment and experience and and you can't learn that in a textbook um, you 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 whether we like it or not we learn from failure and and so uh, as, as you know as you progress in your career or, or really in anything in life um, you know I always say you know fail fast but learn faster 
Um, and that is really true, that, that the way you grow and learn many, many times is, is through failure. And the longer you've worked, <laughs> you know, the more chances at, uh, at failure and, and success. You know, I'm uh, involved in the digital space and uh, I follow a lot of what the craziness is that goes on in Silicon Valley. And all those people are super, <laughs> are super young. Um, maybe uh, those of us who are older sh should uh, kind of steer clear of that oh no i i think that's absolutely irrelevant i i think that you know age is so irrelevant um what we've found at corn Ferry is the number one predictor of career success of ceo success um is learning agility so so quite simply curiosity um, the, the ability to engage in the world. So people agility, mental agility, uh, strategic agility, that, that's the number one predictor of success. And so that, that applies whether you're 15 or whether you're 85 years old. Uh, are you still curious and are you learning and growing? I love that, uh, that curiosity uh, a factor. That's one I've never heard. And I, I find that really a uh... And, and, and maybe a, a missing ingredient that uh, more people should think about uh, themselves and those who are doing the hiring. We actually uh, assess for it. <clears throat> so when we um, um, assess executives, uh, one of the things that we're looking at is, is their learning agility because we've found it uh, to be a big predictor of success. And, and just take, take a simple thing like people agility. Uh, somebody, re, you know, looking at me uh, within the first seven seconds probably made a judgment, uh, how old I am, what my background is, and that actually may be totally false. Uh, they really don't know anything about me. And so as, as a CEO, for example, uh, I can't make those judgments on people. I have to listen, learn, and lead. Um, and so that, that kind of curiosity, that agility around learning, uh, people agility is incredibly important. So uh, the folks coming through uh, your company, uh, I suppose just by the number, sheer numbers, you're seeing more younger people than older people, or how would you judge that? Oh, no, 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 no. It's in fact, if it's if anything, it would be biased more toward uh, older people. Uh, it obviously covers a spectrum, um, but it would probably be a little bit biased towards middle age and older. Well, interesting. Now, I know that you've said a couple of times that some of these uh, uh, superficial factors are irrelevant, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there that way a little bit more. How important is it to look younger? Now, you know the, the, the cosmetic surgeons are... Uh, I really love our generation. We keep them busy with everything from Botox to eye lifts. Uh, how much does that, uh, you know, subconsciously maybe uh, work on you? You know, I, I, I tell people it's how you act, um, you know, a, you know, ACT. And, and I think at the end of the day, A is being authentic. Uh, C is making that connection. And T for giving somebody a taste of who you are, not what you've been. And so I, I, I tend to, to focus on the substance. Now, look, the, the other part is important. Um, and so, for example, if you're going into an interview or you're thinking about another company you'd like to work for or career, you need to think about culture. And so things like uh, how do they dress? Is it is it hoodies and sweatshirts or is it, you know, uh, button down uh, shirts and ties? Yeah, you, you absolutely need to, uh, you know, to think about that, just like you would if you're going to a dinner party. You know, your first question you're going to ask is, what are people wearing? How should I dress? Well, you know, th that's absolutely something you've got to think about in the context of a new job as well. Yeah, that, uh, those are all things that have to be considered. And, and really, what does the older worker have uh, going for them other than experience? That, that's really an uh, important factor, but uh, maybe not every workplace needs experience. They just need someone to uh, deliver and get the job done. Uh, that can be kind of a, a tough skepticism to overcome. Uh, I love failure. And so the, you know, the, I think that's actually the way you learn. And um, whether it's learning to ride a bike and having to fall off, whether it's learning to drive a car, getting into an accident, or whether it's your career, 
uh, you know, fail fast, learn faster. So what I what I like about it is that generally people have failed many more times. And with failure comes learning, and with learning comes growth and success. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, listen, Gary, uh, as we uh, wind out of time here a little bit, um, any uh, last-minute takeaway that uh, someone who has, say, been in a career for a while, they want a, uh, a new opportunity, want to reinvent themselves, uh, what might be uh, something to, to remember? Uh, go back to purpose. D don't blindly send out resumes. Um, you know, go, go back to purpose. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, if you're if you're happy, if you're motivated, you're outperform, and you're probably learning and growing. So go start with purpose. Okay, start with purpose. Thanks so much, Gary. Thank you. Our guest, Gary Burdison, CEO and author of the new book, Lose the Resume, Land the Job. Gary, thanks for joining us. Well, I uh, hope you liked the show and I hope you learned a thing or two. The full show will be available on YouTube and at Bloomer Boomer. The audio version will be available on Apple Podcasts. We have other shows coming up with some amazing guests. So please like us on Facebook and visit us over at bloomerboomer.com. Until next time, so long.